Okay, YouTubers, I'm doing a part three. Um, they got all those. This is Edward in the Golden Palace there, and deep in the jungle, Mindanao. Good afternoon. It's late in the afternoon. Looks like the thunderstorms are might be moving in this time of year. In the afternoons, the rain moves in like every afternoon from the from the interior. So. Uh, all those coconuts we had this morning, like 300 and some, they got all the meat out of it already and bagged up. Now we're going to transport those to the, the area of the steamer. And we had these other coconuts that we've been growing. And this is what they look like after they're old and they just sit for a while. The roots start growing on the bottom and then the tree starts growing out of the top. That's that's. So after about a year, that's what they look like. And then we're gonna bring those to the land and plant them. And then maybe like additional four years from that time, takes about five years. A year to get where you can plant it and then four more years to get uh, fruits coming off it. So we're gonna take those down the road down here, down the neighborhood and then we're gonna, and then the, we got the buffalo out, the Joseline and Burling, everybody. We're gonna head to the camp. And there's all the there's all the pile of bags of the copra. Those are full of coconut. And we uh, no noi, he's the oldest son with the two boys. They're riding on the sled of the carabao. And we're gonna bring those down the road with us and then they'll take the bags after I take the bongo and then we're gonna move everything down to the north land. So that's the plan right now and uh, let me hop in the truck and we'll get after it. Oh yeah. That's the thing with this time of year, the weather is pretty darn good still a until the afternoons and here comes the big rain sometimes. That might last an hour, if that. Okay. Watch out for the traffic, which is tons of motorcycles. That's what, the, that's what it is here in the Philippines. Okay, let's uh Maybe that's going to be good right there. Put on our flashers. Let's see if that's going to be okay. Go ahead a little bit more, Burling. Head a little bit more. Okay. That okay? Okay. Now how many did we get from there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about eleven or twelve bags. So these guys are strong like when I was young. But they're old and they're just as strong. I'm just getting too old now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I threw around these bags here last couple harvest, but it gets uh Oh we lost a piece of coconut right there. Oh we can't lose that. That's huge. Oh that's a nice Toyota right there. Like a 91 Toyota uh crew cab, real nice. I haven't seen those for a while. Mm. Mm. 
with the good coconut right there. Oh my gosh, fresh. And also a tuber is, I'm including all the fruits, coconut, banana, papaya, pineapple, whatever. It's way, way, way different taste when you're catching it or uh, cutting it fresh and harvesting it fresh. Way different taste than store-bought. So you haven't even really tasted any of those fruits if you haven't tasted it off the tree. That's serious. Oh, hold on. Those are heavy. Those are, right now, that's raw, unsteamed coconut. So each one of those bags there are probably 200 pounds. Very heavy. And then once, it, once you do the steaming process, it, the weight maybe goes down 50%, I would say. It probably goes down to a 100-pound bag once, it, once you got the steamed coconut in there. Yeah, I'll just throw it in there anyway. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six so far. That's seven. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, 12 bags. That's great. We're throwing a half maybe. Here for your head. Watch your head. I hit my head on that, that rail right there so many times. Maybe it's not gonna rain, but I thought I heard some thunder over that direction. Usually the interior is when the, where the rain comes from this time of year, but still the sun's out really, really nice. For today! So these are, all these bags here are from pig food, hog, hog food, grain, right, from the grain store. That's where all these bags come from. And we have to buy these bags. Each one's like, uh, uh, I think it's 30 or 40 peso. Does that sound right? Ruel, 30 or 40 pesos each for the bag? For oh. the, yeah. If you buy a bunch of them, you get them for a little bit cheaper, maybe 25 pesos each. So I buy 20, 30 at a time just before the harvest. So. Is that it? Okay. Okay, we're gonna head down the road a piece and and uh, unload now, and then uh, the buffalo or the carabao will take over from there. So remember, before there was cars and trucks, carabao, those big beasts of burden, those that's what did everything in the Philippines to help the Filipino workers and that's what Papa did his whole life that's what he with he has he's had several carabao throughout the years but they last I think 30 some years or longer I need to ask that question how long it actually takes or actually how long they live but that's what they use to skid uh, logs haul big uh, 
trailers of rice or corn or uh, in agriculture. That's what they, they use for all the plowing of the soil, everything, right? And it was cows in the U.S. in the old days, right? Big, huge uh, cows that did it. But here it's this, uh, the carabao. They have their feet are so wide and they're so strong and they're, they do it effortlessly unless you're working them continuously. But you can't, you got to give them breaks to eat grass and to, to go in the, in the creek and, you know, you have to give them rest just like humans. Okay, so it's like, say, it's only like a half kilometer down here. We're almost there actually already. Then we're just going to unload them at the side of the road, and the carabao will take uh, take after that. Sometimes I've gone down the trail, but it's, the trail's gotten so muddy and destroyed right off the road over the years that I just go right to the edge of the road now, and we unload. So, oh yeah, we're doing lots of work here. So I'm not really sure, maybe I'll do it right here. Maybe this is a better spot. Let's do it right here, that's a good place. Okay, let's try that. You put it here? Or what? Maybe we're gonna, maybe we are gonna drive. I don't know. I guess I need to wait, wait for Ruel to get down here. Is Ruel coming, Burling? Okay. So I'm just eating my coconut right now. Well, we wait for Ruel. I don't know. Usually, last time we dropped it alongside the road, then the carabao came. We loaded it into the cart of the carabao. That sounds fine to me. So, this is our. This land right here is not our land. Our land is another quarter kilometer down this road through some trails and then there's a big five hectare piece of land up on the, the edge of the mountain going up to the, the, up the eastern slope. Actually, it's, a, it's the western slope of the mountain ridge that goes all the way around the mountain right there. So yeah, the land is hardly untouched, very fertile. Like I say, you can grow anything you want here. See how how high some of these coconuts get? And that was an 80 footer right there. There's a well. You want to drive down there? Okay. Okay. I guess we're going to drive down there. I get the road must be pretty dry right now. It is a dry season, so I'm just going to head down there and drop off the bags and then the caribou's going to well, I was going to take them all, maybe do another video. Bye-bye for now.